Alright game developers, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking our first look into the exciting world of enemy AI. A very, very, very popular topic on my Patreon spreadsheet. And we're going to be looking at it in the context of a platformer, at least to begin with. And today we're going to be starting off super, super simple. Um, we're going to be building off of the stuff covered in my state machines tutorial on how to create an enemy that can have various different states that are controlled by various different conditions and can go between idle and chasing you and like aggroed and like alert or patrolling and all those different kinds of things. But starting off today, what we're going to do is going to create something very simple and I have it on screen here. Um, I'm just going to create a system whereby we have our basic platformer and there's a little red enemy dude over there who's idle at the moment but when we step into the dark blue sort of circle he becomes aggroed and will chase after you until you move outside of the lighter blue circle on the outside which is this kind of de-aggro range where he just goes back to idle again okay uh, those circles are just there to demonstrate the point they're not really part of the code we're going to be doing today um, but they do demonstrate the kind of ranges so I just threw them in there as a visual aid so to start us off I've gone back and used the code from my basic platformer tutorial, just a little green square that I can move around and jump and do all super basic stuff. The player doesn't himself have a state machine going for him because we don't we won't need that to work with enemies. The enemy itself will have a state machine that we can control um, his different states at any given time. But we only really need a very basic player to interact with our enemies just to kind of get the point across of what we're trying to do. Um, I've set up a sprite for our enemy ahead of time. But other than that, I don't have anything here. I just have the absolute bare-bone basics of our platformer. So the first thing we want to do before we get started making our enemy is we're going to go into the creation code of room zero, just this room I'm throwing together here. And um, I'm doing it in the creation code of this room, but you'd probably do this in some sort of initialization um, object or script that you might call wherever. You know when you typically initialize like your global variables and things like that. It's very common to have like an initialize room or an initialize object or script or whatever that you call at the very beginning of your game to just kind of declare things that are common to the whole game. And that's where we would also call our enumerators. And we're going to make an enumerator in the creation code of this room just so it's made at the very start of the game. And I'll call it enum uh, e underscore state. Now, if you haven't watched my other tutorial on state machines, I highly recommend you do. It's not impossible for you to follow along with this video if you haven't watched that. But um, it'll understand. It'll help you understand the sort of the basics of what it is I'm doing with things like states and what it means to like swap between states. If you have a basic understanding of code, you might just be able to follow along anyway and kind of pick it up as you go along, which is great. But I do highly recommend you watch that video as well. But what I'm doing here is I'm creating an enumerator for the different states our enemies can be in, just to make it easier for us to control our enemy state at any given time rather than setting a variable called state to zero or to one or to two we're going to set it to e state dot idle for idle state and chase for a chase state okay those are the only two states we're going to have um, just to begin with anyway we're going to have an idle state where our enemy just chills out doesn't really do anything will obey physics and everything but otherwise doesn't do anything else and a chase state to allow him to chase after the player when, the, when he gets too close, okay? Um, doing this means instead of me having the right state equals 1 for idle um, in our enemy object, for example, or state equals 2, uh, what I can now do is write state equals e underscore state, e standing for enemy, enemy underscore state, just an easy way of doing it, dot idle, for example, and then that will probably, I think it equals 1 anyway by itself, but it doesn't matter what number it equals, it's just a nicer way of writing it so that we remember what state is what, and I can write state equals e um, underscore state dot chase as well, it's just an easier way easier way to keep track of what state we're in rather than just using numbers okay, so now we, we've got those uh, We've got that enumerator set up and go ahead and close the creation code for this room now. Um, the reason we do that in the creation code is because when you create an enumerator it's it's global scope. So it's the same as like when you create a global variable and it lasts between rooms and it's like fully persistent. Enums are constants, okay? They are fixed values that are set to something at the beginning of the game and they are that way from that point onwards. You can't change an enumerator if you set you can actually set enum values to equal specific values. So I could have set so if I open that back up, I could even set like idle to equal 50, for example, and then 
whenever I type estate.idle, I'm essentially referencing the number 50 forever, okay? Now, useful things for constants might be the, like, the number pi, for example, is a classic one in programming. It's a very classic constant. And this is just a way of essentially creating your own in an easy to refer to way, especially when it's like they're grouped together in something. You create an enum, I'm creating a group of states, and like it's a different number of states. You see, it's just an organizational tool more than anything. Okay, now I've created that. I'm going to go ahead and make our enemy object. So I'm going to make obj underscore enemy, classic naming convention as always. Set the sprite to be spr underscore enemy. And I'm going to add the create event. The first thing. Oh, well, the only thing I'm going to do in here, really, is just initialize three variables. First of all, the state variable, we'll need to declare that one. And I'm going to set that to e underscore state dot idle, just to start our enemy off in its idle state. And then VSP to equal zero and HSP to equal zero. If you're familiar with my platforming stuff, that's vertical speed and horizontal speed, because we're just going to use exactly the same collision code that our player uses. We're literally just going to cut and paste it later, so we're going to be using the same vertical speed and horizontal speed variables that we always use. Okay, so that's all we need for the create event. And then go ahead and add the step event. Now, before when we were, when I was demonstrating state machines, I demonstrated it um, using like everything split into different scripts. We're not actually going to split everything into different scripts this time. We're just going to actually keep the code contained within the switch statement for switching for for checking what state we're in just because there's not really a lot uh, of code in this specific tutorial and it'll just keep it easier and more, it'll just be clearer to see it all on the screen rather than splitting it off into different scripts. Really just for the sake of the video, um, you can split it off into different scripts if you like and we'll probably do that later on as this gets more complicated. But for this video, we're just gonna keep everything in one place in which, and we're still using a state machine as you will see. So I'm gonna make switch state okay so i'm creating a switch for our current state okay our variable state at the moment as we know is set to uh, e underscore state dot idle it's set in the create event and by creating a switch statement we're going to check what state equals and we're going to do something based on if it equals a number of different things a number of different cases you might say so the first case will be if state equals e underscore state dot idle which it does it's what it equals at the beginning of the game Open another car, yeah, another cat, another pair of braces, and in here I'm going to say horizontal speed is going to be zero because we're not moving anywhere because we're idle. Uh, VSP, our vertical speed, is going to equal, and I'll just do a quick min thing to do gravity, I guess. So min, so the smallest number out of either uh, seven, I guess, is the highest we want to move downwards, and VSP plus 0.05. Okay, so it'll add 0.05 to um, or vertical speed every frame just like rough group. you might want to do that as a grav variable or something but I'm just keeping this as simple as possible for now rather than just hard coding numbers in but um yeah that's just a really simple way of doing gravity with a maximum speed there and then all we need to do that's all really we ever want to do in our idle state other than obviously calculating movement which we'll do late uh, calculating collisions and stuff which we can do later separate from our state checking really because collisions can generally always be on for our enemy object I don't think there's really many conditions and we, we might move them into the, the, the state machine later but right now we're gonna have it exist outside of it because it just we don't need it to exist inside it at the moment so the only other thing our state our idle state needs is a way to move from the idle state to the chase state so I'm gonna say if distance to object obj underscore player uh, less than 96 state equals e underscore state uh, dot chase semicolon okay simple as that oh and i forgot to add a bracket up there close that always make sure you close your brackets interesting thing i don't know if i've ever pointed this out before but if you highlight brackets like that or if you click near brackets you see it comes up in blue and highlights the the other closing one so you can see which of your brackets are closed properly and so on which can help you fix uh dumb mistakes every now and again Okay, so, and to finish off that case, we write break there. So if it is, if that case does run, it'll run all this code, and then it'll break, which ends the switch statement. Okay. Um, so, but if that's not the case, if we're no longer in the idle state because we're quite we're within 96 pixels of the player, that means we're going to be in state dot chase. Okay. Um, 
Oh, also, it's a proper colon at the end of these case statements, okay? Not a semicolon, which is an important note. I don't know what resolution you're necessarily watching the video in, but in case you can't, it's, it's very important that you put a proper colon there and not a semicolon. Semicolon will end the line, whereas the colon is telling us what we want to do afterwards, okay? You write semicolons when you want to end the line. Another common mistake I've seen people make, this is kind of off topic, but it's like when they do an if statement breaking off into lots of things, putting a semicolon there, which you'd never want to do. You never want to put a semicolon at the end of the if statement before the commands from that if statement, because you're telling GameMaker that the line has ended. Anyway, sorry about that, that was just a minor thing. Um, just something I've noticed a lot of people doing lately in the comments and so on. Anyway, so if we are in our chase state, then what we're going to do is we're going to decide on a direction. First of all, we're going to send dir equals uh, sign obj underscore player dot x minus x. Okay, uh, so we're going to take the x coordinate of our player and subtract uh, the x coordinate of this enemy. And that'll be negative if uh, the player is on the left of us, and it'll be a positive number if the player is on the right of us. Uh, meaning if we get the sign from that, we'll get plus one if uh, we want to move to the right, and negative one if we want to move to the left. Okay. So, having no now that we know that, I'm just going to say HSP, our horizontal speed, equals DIR times two, or whatever you want your movement speed to be in pixels. I'm just doing something that's slower than the player, just so that we can kind of outrun him. And demonstrate the whole state thing working. Uh, VSP, we're going to do the exact same kind of gravity thing again. And plonk that in there. And then all we need here again is a way to change between states and go back to the idle state. So I'm going to say if distance to object obj underscore player greater than 128, the state equals. Um, e underscore state dot idle a semicolon and then a break there as well to break that specific uh, switch case okay and like I could go on adding like more cases and things to different states that our enemy might be in or I might uh, break these off into scripts that can call so if you, if they start to get larger and like um, harder to read on one page I might split them off into different scripts um, and so on. But for now, just these two things are all we want, just to kind of get the basics of this on the go. Okay, so that's already worked out what our HSP and VSP are going to be based on what state we're in. So now we just need the collide and move code, which we can just nick from our player object. So I'm just going to go into the step event of our player, just down here, the horizontal and vertical collision. It's exactly the same code as how HSP and VSP work, just this little chunk now. It's a very useful just chunk of code that you can just kind of fling around. Um, and it'll it'll just work because it's a HSP and VSP and it's just like checking to see whether or not our position plus HSP or plus VSP is going to be a wall and if there is a wall we move to it and we stop and then we commit to moving however much we wanted to move in those directions it's really simple okay that's really all it is that's that's all we need for this now so I'm gonna go ahead and close that close this and open up room zero and just actually plonk one of these objects in the room and plonk him like so I'm setting up there. I only raised the platform a little just so you can kind of see the gravity working. And you see him falling just like our player does anyway. And if I get close enough to him, he'll start chasing me. And if I move far enough away, he'll stop. Okay. So simple as that, really. And I demonstrated it with the radius thing at the beginning, but I'm not going to repeat that code now. So that's the basics of like how you can start to begin start to begin uh how you can start to create like a, a basic enemy ai um this specific uh thing might be more useful in the context of like top down things i suppose but we'll get into more stuff that's like kind of platforming specific and getting our enemy to maybe jump when he needs to and do different things like that later on um but this is just i just want to kind of get the foundation across of like what you kind of need what direction you need to go in with your code to kind of get this stuff to work okay i hope that was useful for you guys any suggestions leave them in the comments below um thank you all for watching liking subscribing sharing all those awesome things you do all the time continue to do and i'll catch you guys next time thanks guys